Welcome back to Why in the Morning. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at uh, exploring opportunities through education. And we'll also touch into the hospitality in the stickers of my guest. My guest is Miss Veronica Nduta uh, Kamau. And she is she's the head of the department uh, head of the department uh, in hospitality and tourism at ZTech University. Thank you very much, Miss Veronica, for creating time to be with us. You're welcome. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Too. How are you feeling today? I'm glad. I thank God. Uh -huh. I am happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you also for finding time to host me. You are very much welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. So tell us in details what you actually do briefly. Uh, let me start again by saying my name is Veronica Kamau. I am in the hospitality and tourism department. I have been there for quite some time. Currently, I'm in the head of uh, department office in ZTEC University, a job I love doing. I love what I do. Uh, my day-to-day -day experience or my day-to-day -day activity uh, is basically in uh, lecturing and uh, dealing with the young people, mm -hmm. uh, especially the students, uh, from morning to evening, uh, forming these students, uh, because uh, I believe in uh, not only having a professional, but I believe in having an all-round person. As far as the hospitality industry is concerned, you realize that we are more of a people sk uh, skilled, a people service uh, industry. Not re as much as uh, we are hands on, uh, we are more of uh, you need people's skills uh, to be able to manage. And that is what I do in my day to day life. I want my students to have people's skills uh, as, uh, apart from just having the a professional side of it or the academic side of it. People's skills is very important. And that is what I do every day. I impart those skills and I love what I do. All right, day. nice. Yes. And for someone who's watching this and they're looking forward to getting to campus and take partake in hospitality yes. tourism. Mm -hmm. And how can they ensure that uh, when they get into uh, seeking education mm -hmm. they go for the relevant skills? Uh, for you to be able to choose the right uh, course or the right skill, uh, for one, I usually say there are two main things that you need to consider. Number one, what is your strength? What do you think you can be able to do? What, are you, what is your strength? What is your skill? Number two, what is your interest? Mm -hmm. For us, especially in the hospitality industry, it is about interest. You must be interested in what you do. Basically, I know even you as you work, you're really interested in what you do. So you must be interested in what you do. Are you able to deliver what is expected of you? Don't just look at a, a skill and say, I think this is going to bring me more money, this is going to bring me less money. No, it must be your strength. You must have the interest and the like to do what it takes. Why? Let us look, for example, at the hospitality industry. What do you deal with? You deal with people day in, day out. Day in, day out, you're dealing with people mostly. It is not actually about food. It is not actually about uh, maybe drinks. It is about the service that you offer. What is your personality? What is your character? Do you think you have the people's skills to be able to deal with people from morning to evening and still maintain that smile? Mm. And still in the evening, tell people, good evening, how are you? And <laughs> even after having a very rough day. Mm -hmm. So for me, for you to be able to pick the right skill or the right course, you must have the strength and you must have the interest. Those two are the main things. And of course, number three, you must be able to look at the grades. That for me comes to number three. You must be able to look at the grades because the grade, you can't get a lower grade and start from down there and climb up slowly by slowly. So grade for me is not number one, but for me, interest, strength, come faster than the grid. After that, now you can be able to choose what you really want to do. All right, because I look at this particular industry and it's a service industry. Yes. So personality plays a key role here. A key role. Character and personality is mm -hmm. key. Character and personality is key. Mm -hmm. Because for us, you must be able to maintain that smile. Maybe just the way we see on the screens. However annoyed you are, you must smile when you're reading news. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. You must. If I come for an interview uh -huh. here, you must smile. Maybe however sad, however you, you must. The same case with that. Remember, in the hospitality industry, we say we want to offer a home away from home. Mm -hmm. How do you make somebody feel home away from home? By being there, by giving that smile, by being very, by having the right attitude towards that particular guest, by having the right personality. Mm -hmm. So for us, people's skills is key. 
All right, so you've interacted, uh, uh, probably before you even ask this question, take yes. us through your background, bef uh, to the point where you actually fell in love with uh, to, uh, matters pertaining hospitality and tourism, and you embarked on this journey to, to get to where you are right now. Hi, ah, it has been a long journey, a long journey. I think it was back in the village because I've grown up in the village. And uh, uh, I would say my mother was uh, very strict as far as cooking was concerned. Huh? Mm -hmm. And we had to cook. So by, I, I don't know whether it is by chance, but uh, I just la happened to love a lot of cooking and a lot of uh, uh, serving people because I think basically I was uh, at home throughout. So after Form 4, uh, I, that is when I started uh, by doing a certificate course. I did a certificate course in uh, food and beverage production, sales and service. And those years, uh, certificate course used to take three years mm -hmm. because it was a government course. And I did the three years of my certificate course. Uh, and uh, after that, I got a job. Uh, I worked in uh, Sportsby Hotel Kasarani for quite some time, a job I really enjoyed. And after that, that is when I learned, I think, my interest is in serving people. My interest is interacting with different people, different personalities, because in the hotel you get to meet very many personalities, uh, different people, and uh, you engage with them. Eh? And uh, I think I felt content. So after some time, I decided uh, maybe I would want to further my education, and I went to technical university. I furthered my education. I got my diploma. Mm -hmm. I later, after some time, after technical university, I changed now from uh, the hotel. I went to teaching, mm -hmm. or rather to training. I went to training, and uh, now that is when I think I got to interact with the younger people. And I felt I think my satisfaction is more on transforming the younger ones on uh, making them uh, transform from point A to point B. And I felt so motivated. Uh, I would want to, I, would, I, I really yearned to see them become better people. Mm -hmm. So that is how, now again, I went back, I continued my, with my education, I did my degree, I did my master's, and uh, here I am. I love what I do. I love making a difference in the young people. I love teaching them. All right, and uh, through all this process to getting where you are right now, did you have a mentor? Ah, uh, yes I do. Mm -hmm. Yes I do. Each one of us requires a mentor. And I would say a mentor is somebody that you admire. A mentor is somebody that you pick virtues from. Because uh, you wouldn't want to pick vices. You pick uh, virtues uh, from. Mm -hmm. And um, currently, I, have, I would say I have two currently. Okay. I have one who, is, uh, who used to be my lecturer in Kenyatta University called Dr. Mary Muticia. She has been my good mentor and my good advisor. And number two is my boss, right. Dr. Alice Njuguna. Okay. She has been a good mentor to me. She, she has all it takes uh, that uh, encourages me to be able to move on. So those two people have really made an impact in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tend to pick the virtues uh, from them. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, they're also in the line of uh, education. So we're on the same line. Okay. Yes. How important is it to, when coming to choosing uh, a mentor, like the relevance of, of mentorship? And uh, what should we look out for uh, in, the, in the space of education? You should look out for somebody who has, uh, maybe I would say, who has uh, what you want to be. Let me put it like that. For example, mostly we ask, what, do you, what would you want to be? And uh, somebody would answer, I would want to be a musician. So if you, somebody would want to be a musician, it would be very hard uh, for somebody to take me as a mentor if they want to be a musician because I'm not in that line. Correct, okay. yes. You pick somebody who is in your line. And as I said, there must be something you admire in that person. There must be a virtue you admire in that person. Mm -hmm. For example, you would admire maybe their character, their, the way they carry themselves, their decision making, their attitude, quite a number of uh, things. Mm -hmm. So look at those things and pick that person. Of course, uh, uh, as much as maybe they might not be a public figure, you find that you get to know how people do things uh, by just watching them and seeing how they carry themselves. Let me give an example of uh, uh, Dr. Mary Muticia. She has been my lecturer. And I admired one thing about her. She was never late for class. She never missed a class. And I've, me, I've learned when uh, I am a mother. She never missed a class. She, and when she came, she delivered. Uh, 
she considered all of us the slow learners, the fast learners, we are all on the same level. And I really, I think I admired that aspect of her so much that I really said, surely when I get to that level, I would really want to be a lecturer like her. Mm -hmm. Let me also take an example of Dr. Njuguna. Okay. Yeah, who is my boss? The same case with her. I, she is, uh, she just does things very nice. Uh, she's, uh, she's very good. Mm -hmm. And I admire quite a number of things about her. So I would want to be like them. And I usually try to emulate them as much as possible. Oh, I see. Choose a mentor uh, from the same lane of industry. Or Most probably, yes. Okay, that you yes. like to get into. Yes. Uh, Ms. Veronica, you interact with uh, a lot of young people from different... You've interacted with a lot of young people from different yes. uh, high institutions. Uh, and uh, what I would like to find out is what is usually the gap between just the relevance, getting the relevant skills and going out there in the job market just to fulfill those particular needs? Uh -huh. For example, you find that especially when uh, we are training, we might not be able to train 100% of what the industry expects. Because for example, we will train maybe, I would say, we will give uh, a lot of theory classes. Eh? But now when you come to the industry, you must be able to put those uh, skills that we taught in theory uh, into practice. And I think the gap is there. Whereby you've learned things theoretically, but when you go to the industry, they become practical. It is usually very hard, especially for the young people, to be able to transform from the theoretical part of it uh, to the practical part of it. That is where the gap comes in. Mm -hmm. However, we try as much as possible, and that is why we are always encouraging our students to go for internship and attachment. Huh? Basically, I would want to say quite a number of our students are usually engaged in different establishments over the weekend so that they can get on their hands-on experience huh? of how to transform the theory part of it huh? to the practical aspect. Mm -hmm. Yes, the student should be able to adjust huh? to from the institution to the industry. Okay. Yes. And speaking about that, I think that's very, quite very important because at the end of the day, I'm going to school to acquire knowledge yes. so that I can be able to help myself and mm -hmm. also help other people around me mm -hmm. and uh, probably start a company or even if I'm going to get into employment, I'm just going to add value in that particular space. True. So let me ask you, so yes. are there particular uh, programs that are set aside just to ensure that if uh, I'm I'm at the uh, institution when I'm, I'm when I'm taking my course. Mm -hmm. That let's say I'm into hospitality, yes. hotelier, mm -hmm. so that I'm equipped, like uh, totally equipped to just be in a position to start a company of my own. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for let me for what we do, for example, in Ziteka, uh, apart from the theory classes that uh, we do and the practical classes, uh, we really emphasize on an all-round student. Uh, we have uh, mentorship programs. Number two, we have a lot of career advice from our staff. And number three, we have a, a guidance and counseling office. These three offices uh, work hand in hand with the lecturers to ensure that uh, the student has all they need uh, so that they prepare them for uh, the, the job market. Number two, we have an entrepreneurship club, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, headed by Professor Kibaza. And it really facilitates and helps the students to prepare them for Entrepreneur, not necessarily that you might have to get a job, mm -hmm. uh, you can start your own job. So the entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship skills uh, are a must for all our students. It is a common unit. And it is not just a common unit taught just like that. It is a common unit where we put a lot of emphasis and guide our students. To some extent, they even write business plans of what would you want to do, mm -hmm. then we're able to guide them. So there are skills that we impart on our students so that at least they, when they leave, uh, when they finish their courses, not necessarily that you must get a job, but you can be able to, you can actually be an employer. And we've had students who've done that, uh, quite a number of them. Mm -hmm. I have especially my tourism students, uh, although times are hard, uh, who have started tour companies. Uh, and I am usually happy about that. They've started tour companies and they're actually able to take some more students, uh, even for internship in their companies. Mm -hmm. So at least I know in ZTEC, we really impart skills, entrepreneurship skills, to our students and they usually set uh, mm. for the industry. All right, and uh, in your background, you 
Talk to me about the fact that you have also worked in a couple of restaurants. Yes. Uh, uh, still in the hospitality sector. Yes. yes. So I would like to hear from you, for someone who is watching this conversation mm -hmm. and they probably run a restaurant or even a hotel mm -hmm. uh, during this, uh, uh, the revisit of the COVID-19 rules by the government yes. when it comes to matters pertaining restaurants mm -hmm. and the issue of takeaways and how the, the whole the whole business, how it's running. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice just to ensure that businesses that they stay afloat? Uh, uh, right now we are badly hit, I would say, by COVID, although everybody is badly hit, but I think the hospitality and the tourism industry, we are worse. However, I will not say that we're going to give up because people must eat. Eh? People must eat, people must drink, people must travel. True. So we must be able to continue. If you're running a restaurant, for sure, we can't close down. What do we do? Because uh, basically, if you're running an, uh, an establishment, the highest costs are the overhead costs. So I would advise that we reduce the overhead costs uh, and reduce costs by costs that are not necessary. For example, you would go to an establishment and find that it is uh, midday and the lights are still on, which is not necessary. Switch the lights off. That will reduce a cost in one way or another. Uh, for the employment, uh, reduce maybe labor costs. Just maintain the people that you need uh, to do the job that is required. Then let us uh, look at the current trends. What are the current trends? Not necessarily that I have to go to the hotel to have lunch. We can look at home deliveries. We can look at office deliveries. Because now that is uh, the oh, niche right now. Yes. Okay. Because instead of having people come to the hotel which uh, the MOH is discouraging, mm -hmm. why don't you start on home deliveries, on office deliveries, instead of uh, waiting for people to come? Let us look at the current trends and look at what uh, we can be able to improvise and do far much better. We are seeing, uh, we, we have other ways, uh, apart from maybe the deliveries, we have other ways maybe of, uh, let me call it truck catering, whereby I don't have to wait for people to come to my hotel. I can have a truck and uh, do it a very nice way, have a, my, a small kitchen aid, and I do takeaways mm -hmm. I don't, so that people don't have to come to where I am. I go to where people are. And with that, we're going to keep going. Okay. And as we wait for things to come back to normal, mm -hmm. which we are praying and hoping that, they will be back to normal. All right, and as we just uh, uh, be hopeful that things will go back to normal, yes. which I'm very much sure that we yes. will go back to yes. our new normal. Yes. I, I'd like to find out what are a couple of elements that this in this particular space when mm -hmm. it talks about when you talk about the hospitality industry, a mm -hmm. couple of key elements that uh, the operators should look out for. Uh, go back to the drawing board. Going back to the drawing board that mm -hmm. is just uh, uh, immediately after we resume to our new normal of operations. Uh, for any for anybody, especially who's running a business, uh, well, the new norm requires us to go back to the drawing board on everything. We have to review our menus. We have to review the way we do things. Whatever it is that we do, we have to review. Maybe initially, I used to do buffet. Is it still marketable? We have to look at our market again. We review literally everything. We review our menus, we review our market, we look at the, what, is the current, uh, what are the current trends that are trending right now as far as hospitality is concerned, as far as tourism is concerned. Right now, maybe international tourism is not as much as per se. So what is uh, catching now? The domestic tourists. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to be able to catch the attention of my fellow Kenyans so that they be can become mm -hmm. more active tourists than before? What can I do to uh, maybe my customers, maybe my niche market is uh, the young ones. What can I do to the young ones so that I can be able to capture their attention so that uh, I can be able to deliver maybe food or my products and services to them as far as uh, the guidelines that are set are concerned. So we have to go back to the drawing board, sit down and look at everything, our costing, our market, our, our, the, our prices, everything, so that we retain, we remain relevant. Because we must remain relevant in, in the business. If you know, if you don't, if you're not relevant, then you close down. We must remain relevant. I usually like the informal sector. Mm -hmm. the, the informal sector, by the way, is going on very well. Go to industrial area, Mama Kibanda. Mama Kibanda is still going on very well. Why? Because I think for them, they review things every day. 
every morning, every day, they review what, how they do their things. And that is how we are supposed to do. Review, review, and we remain relevant in the market. All right. And what is the future looking like when you talk about uh, this particular space, hospitality and tourism? The future is bright. Mm -hmm. Bright. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because we are seeing the current trends. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, people want to go out more. That's the current. People want to go out more, more than before, actually. People want to feel away from, uh, feel home, uh, feel at home, away from home more than before. So the future is bright. As much as uh, we have uh, the COVID-19, the future is still bright. Mm -hmm. the, right now, there must be a bit of hiccups here and there, mm -hmm. but the future is very bright mm -hmm. because uh, tourists are still coming. People are still eating. Functions will always be there. Events will always be there. They are not stopping. Right. So the future is bright. Okay. Yes. So as we wind up, I have mm -hmm. this question. You've worked in a, in a restaurant. What makes a three-star hotel and what makes a five-star hotel? The facilities. <laughs> huh? The three-star. We Actually, we start from one-star, two-star, uh -huh. three-star, four-star, mm -hmm. five-star. In Kenya, we've gone up to five-star. Yes. In Dubai, we are up to seven-star. Mm -hmm. And it is the facilities that are in the hotels. Uh, what do you find in different hotels? Um, we have uh, the hotels that offer fine dining, for example whereby everything is just finely done. So the facilities that a hotel offers is what defines whether it is a one star, a two star, a three star, a four star, or a five star. Right. Let me just give a brief example. Maybe you have hotels that have uh, swimming pools, they have a spa, they have a gym, they have uh, all that, they have a business center. It is all-in-one inclusive. You can get everything in that hotel. Mm -hmm. And the class of that, particular, what is their class? What is their how is their category? How do they do the things? So the facilities, how do they run their things? How do they do their things? Is what determines whether a hotel is a one star or a five star. Okay. Yes. All right. So as we wind up, what is the one thing that you can tell a young student in preparation for the job market? You must be that person who always goes an extra mile. In the job market, it doesn't need the normal person. You must be that person who is always wanting to go an extra mile. You must be that person who points out an opportunity before your boss does. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of a person the job market requires. That your boss doesn't have to say, remove that spoon. You have already seen that that spoon needs to be removed from there. You've kept it where it's supposed to be. And uh, not even being uh, told. Uh. Number two, you must be able to work under minimum supervision. Under minimum supervision. Be that person who tells themselves what to do, despite of everything. Don't wait to be told always. Go the extra mile in your job, do the extra duties, then work under minimum supervision. Then finally, make sure you have the people's skills. Your attitude, attitude in capital letters, must be right. Make sure you have the right attitude for whichever job it is. Whether you become an entrepreneur, whether you're employed, you must have the right attitude to the job and love what you do. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Miss Veronica. Come on, for creating the interview with us today. And talking on matters pertaining, exploring opportunities through education and also touching on the hospitality industry. You're welcome. Asante Sada. You're welcome. Sorry? If, you, if someone, uh, the people who are watching, if they yes. want to reach out to you, how yes. can they get to you? They can get me uh, in my, uh, maybe my email or my Facebook page, although it is yes. not related to Zitec. I have okay. uh, my Facebook, which is uh, Veronica. Uh, why Veronica and Duta? Mm -hmm. I am on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Maybe my email Veronica dot Duta Zitek dot se dot ke. They will get me there. Okay, thank you very yes. much, Miss Veronica. Thank you too. All thank right. you for having time to host me. Absolutely. So thank you very much. So that is Miss Veronica and Duta Kamau. Uh, she is the head of the Department of Hospitality, Tourism, and uh, Hospitality and Tourism at Zitek University. We're talking about exploring opportunities through education and also touching on to into uh, the hospitality industry. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way right here on Y254 channel. Uh, Y254 channel is that's where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira that's where you can find me across all my socials so we'll be right back